Hi, and welcome to Ask the Suit. My name is Carly Purnell, and I am a student at Southern Nash Middle School. Today, I have Dr. Anthony Jackson, the superintendent of Nash Rocky Mount Public Schools. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having we me. We are delighted to have you. Great. I'm glad to be here with you guys, especially to start off a new school year. Let's get right to the questions. Right. How long have you been a superintendent? Well, I, believe it or not, I am starting my sixth year as a superintendent. Uh, starting my fourth year here, and I served as, uh, two years in uh, Virginia and the Henry County School System. Why did you become a superintendent? Well, I didn't intend to be a superintendent. Uh, I was a music teacher, and um, I began looking for more and more opportunities uh, to serve more and more students, and my pathway led me to the superintendency. I've, I've been a, a teacher, uh, I've been a principal, an assistant principal, a director, uh, and so it's just been a, a logical pathway for me, and I ended up here in the superintendency seeking opportunities to serve more and more students. I just enjoyed doing the work to help students, so that's how I ended up here. Do you ever miss the classroom? I miss the classroom every day, and every time I walk into a school building, and every time I, I, I walk out of a school building, I have this pang that I want to be back in. And so there are times, even last week, when I go into classrooms, there are times when I will actually, if the teacher will allow me to, uh, to, to do, I will actually teach. So I, I actually taught a music class last week uh, at uh, one of our other schools. Um, but I miss it uh, a lot because that's where the work happens. That's where you guys are. And so I came into the business to work with students. And so I, anytime I can be around students, I'm happiest. Was there any other jobs that you did before coming as superintendent? Absolutely. My first job was uh, at McDonald's. Uh -huh. And I tell people I learned an awful lot about what I do every day uh, working for McDonald's because I had to um, really develop a work ethic. I had to lead my peers because I was promoted and became kind of a shift manager. And so I had to lead my peers. I had to uh, organize my time because I was, I was still in school and uh, in high school at the time. And, and so I had to organize my time so I could get the work done at school and also uh, do the work. So I tell people a lot of the things that I've learned about leadership uh, and about uh, uh, working and, and being uh, successful, I learned early on in those first jobs I had, but my, the most impactful job I've had growing up uh, was at McDonald's. What made you choose Nash Rocky Mount Public Schools? Um, I saw a great opportunity here to come and work with a great school system that was doing great things and had the ability, I think, to, to grow and do other things um, uh, that, that were just completely out of the box. I, I saw a community that was willing to embrace new things. I saw a, a, a student body that was growing and getting better. I saw excellent um, uh, teachers. I saw excellent uh, community support. Uh, and I saw excellent outcomes. So I was just, I think, fortunate to be selected to come and lead the system uh, because there were a lot of great things going on here, and I wanted to be a part of taking what was already good and making it better. What do you think is the greatest responsibility of being a superintendent? Making sure that we have all of the resources um, at the school level for our students, and that's harder. It gets harder and harder every single day. Making sure that you guys are taken care of, uh, that you're safe, that you have great teachers in front of you, um, and, and that we're preparing you for your futures and not getting locked into doing the things that were best for us, but that we're looking at what's best for you guys. So my, I, I believe my greatest responsibility is making sure that you guys are taken care of uh, on a daily basis. That is great to hear. What are the biggest financial challenges? Now, that's a good question. Uh, it's trying to take all of the resources that we have and spread them over all of the needs. But we do that at home. We do that in our personal lives. And so we have to do that as a school system. And sometimes we have to make tough choices. Uh, but the biggest financial challenge is understanding that uh, our economy sometimes is very challenged, meaning we don't have all the money we once had or all the money we would like to have. Uh, but it's being very good stewards of whatever you get, taking the money that we have and then saying, okay, what are our needs and how can we best spread this over? And how can I go back to that primary responsibility I talked about? How can we make sure that we're using these resources to take care of our students? Uh, 
to the best of our ability. You mentioned making decisions. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of decisions do you make? Mm -hmm. oh, I make uh, lots of decisions on a daily basis. Um, many of them uh, deal with uh, financial resources and what we use them for. Uh, the types of uh, uh, individual types of programs we're going to have in our schools. They, uh, I make decisions every day about the types of individuals and uh, who we're going to hire and, and bring to stand in classrooms with you. I make decisions uh, about all of the uh, resources that are going to be used in our schools, and that, I don't make them by myself. I make them in, co in consultation and in collaboration with uh, lots of people, including your teachers, your principals. I like to hear from them and even from you guys. And once we make those decisions, we hope we're making the best ones uh, so that you guys will be able to grow and, and excel academically. If you could sit down with our legislators and you tell them one thing about Nash Rocky Mount Public Schools, what would it be? That we have the absolute best school system, I believe. Uh, not only in the state, not only in the country, but in the universe. I think we have great people here, and that starts with great parents who send us great students, great teachers who come to work every day uh, to really make sure that our students are, are learning uh, at high levels. And we have, I believe, uh, uh, the, the formula is here for us to be the absolute best. And so I would ask them to come and experience Nash Rocky Mount, not to look at one piece of data, but come and experience it. Because when I walk in and out of schools, I mean, look at this room, look at you guys, what you're able to do with this program today. Look at uh, our, our, our programs that we're doing across the district. Look at the types of teachers that we have who are committed to our students. Look at the parents who are willing to do all the amazing things. I get excited when I talk about Nash Rocky Mount. And what I want them to do is get equally as excited about it. Um, but I want them to experience it and not talk about it. So my uh, commitment to them would be experience Nash Rocky Mount. That is great to hear. Great. How will the new teacher salary scale assist with retaining and recruiting teachers? Well, I think it will help us identify and, 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 and uh, recruit those um, Everybody goes into a profession so that they can be um, uh, um, valued and, and, and so that they can use their skill to, in fact, take care of their families and make a contribution to the community. And so anything we can do to attract the absolute best people to Nash Rocky Mount, I believe is going to be helpful. I believe the new salary scale will do that. Uh, um, is it 100% is it perfect? No. But is it a, a good step forward? Absolutely. So I believe that it will help us attract uh, maybe some that we weren't able to attract before. How is the one-to-one -one computer initiative going? And how do you think this is helping our students? Well, Wow, maybe I should ask you that, but I will tell you that I, I just came from a training session uh, with our principals this morning where they are learning um, really how to help teachers. Um, I've been to training sessions with our teachers where they have been learning how to help you. I've been in classrooms where I've seen them deliver uh, the instruction, where I've seen our students doing things that I didn't see them doing three or four years ago. I believe the one-to-one -one initiative, if anything, it's helping our students grasp the notion that I have to think and that the answers aren't as simple as just right there, that there are many different ways to get to the answer and that I'm responsible for figuring it out so that I figure out the best path to the answer for me. Uh, and so I believe that with so much information available to us via the Internet and other places, there are multiple pathways to get to the same point. And I think that the one-to-one -one offers you a pathway that's built for you um, and allows another student a pathway that will be different for them. So it's really going to be a good thing for us to help you personalize your, your educational pathway. Uh, so I think I've, I'm seeing that already. I think it will only get better. I agree. Please I'm tell us. <laughs> Please tell us a little about the recent improvements in our graduation rate, and what do we owe the success? Well, our graduation rate has been improving for the last seven years, and uh, I think I think what I would attribute that to is one we're we're monitoring that closely. Uh, I believe we're creating those pathways that we talked about, where we're trying to meet the needs of, of different students. Not every student's going to go the same pathway. 
Uh, some students need a smaller setting. So I believe offering opportunities like the early college high school has been a, a, a plus for us. Uh, offering opportunities like our Tar River Academy where our students can recover credits have been uh, all, you know, excellent. I believe uh, the integration of technology where students can now take additional courses um, uh, via uh, 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 online uh, delivery. Uh, things like that have really helped our students find ways to, to navigate this, this thing we call high schools and then we've provided opportunities for every student if you fall down you can get back up and so I think those things have helped but most importantly I think it's just the total belief of our teachers and our community that graduation is an important milestone and that we're going to do every single thing in our power to get every student to that milestone that is wonderful Thanks. why did you choose the thing believe it this year well, I didn't really choose it. It just happened. Uh, we were kind of in a room trying to say our themes have been for the last couple of years about possibilities. And if you at some point possibilities are only real um, if you actually can paint the picture and you have to really internalize it. And so what better way to internalize something than to declare clearly that I believe that it's possible. And so this is just kind of a continuation of the same theme. And most importantly, I just believe that if we all are focused on the same things, if we all agree that making sure that you guys are successful and that we're willing to do whatever is, is necessary to, to ensure that, then if we can demonstrate that and believe it, you guys will take that and, and understand that you've got the support system you need uh, to really go to the next step. And so then you'll work even harder. And so it really comes down to our dispositions. If we believe it, we should say it. If we believe it, we should behave it. If we, should, if we believe it, we should act like it every single day. And, and you should be able to feel it so that then you want to make sure that we are, uh, that our work is not in vain by demonstrating what you have to do every day to be successful. Because we're happiest when we can look back and see that what we did made a difference for you. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, I, I, I think what we say is keep working hard. That's what we want for you. We're here for you. We're your team. That is great to hear. Great. In your welcome video, you mentioned working collaboratively with our stakeholders. Who are our stakeholders and how do you plan to work with them? Stakeholder is just a fancy word for customers. You, you're a stakeholder, your parents, uh, our teachers are stakeholders, our business community, all of those individuals. And I just believe that before we can make progress, everybody has to agree to work together. Uh, and it's just like anything else. We have to be willing to come together and say that uh, nothing is more important than, than your future success. And if we can do that and put aside all other issues uh, and, and pull all of our resources together, uh, you're going to be successful and we're going to be proud. And there's nothing more important than that than looking back and having not only your parents, but your whole community proud of what you've been able to accomplish because we've contributed to it. So that's what we're talking about, bringing everybody together to do that. Also, in your welcome video, you say that students will have more opportunities to shine this year. Give us an example of what you mean. Well, this is one of them. We want to give you real practical opportunities to do the things that we talk about. You shouldn't have to wait until you get on a college campus to actually do what you're doing right now. We don't know if this will spark an interest. We're trying to hone all of our programs so that you can uh, 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 Try things in school so that you don't have to wait until later. For example, I know at Southern Nash Middle, this year you guys have a chorus. And so it, who knows what that, what that could spark in a youngster uh, uh, or in one of your classmates. Uh, I was a musician, uh, but I didn't really know that I had musical abilities until a teacher, and believe it or not, it was in middle school, heard me singing in the halls and pulled me aside and said, sing that again. And I sang it for her, and then from there, I built my entire professional career. Uh, so we want to make sure that those types of opportunities don't escape, uh, don't escape our, our students and that we are providing them on a regular basis. That's all the questions we have time for today. I want to thank my guest, Dr. Anthony Jackson, for joining us. For NRMPS-TV, I'm Carly Purnell.